Hello friends, hi, this is Dr. Shonali Chandra, your Obscani faculty at Prep Ladder. And uh, let's have a look, a uh, rapid recall of the cardiovascular system changes during pregnancy, the normal physiological changes. And uh, to go through this, uh, I have the rapid revision notes here. So you can see they are in the QA format. So they make you think, right? That's the whole purpose of active recall. So the big question here is that what are the physiological changes in the circulatory system in pregnancy? That is what we're focusing on. Cardio vascular system changes. Now, I want to also help you understand that how questions are framed around it. So, let us have a look at question. Okay. Now, 25 year old primary gravida with mitral stenosis is pregnant. When is her risk of going into heart failure maximum? So, the first question arises is yes, that heart disease in pregnancy poses a significant risk of heart failure during pregnancy. Now, why is that? So, let us kind of correlate and learn, right? So, mitral stenosis is a fixed cardiac output state, right? Now, we know that in pregnancy, the cardiac output is increasing, isn't it? We know that. Now, the question is asking, when is the risk of going into heart failure maximum? So, obviously, when the cardiac output is going to be maximum or let us say when the cardiac output is supposed to be maximum, that is when the risk of going into heart failure would be maximum because the woman would not be able to increase her cardiac output as demanded by pregnancy, isn't it? If she is suffering from mitral stenosis. So, that is the concept here, all right? Now, the factual information, when is the cardiac output maximum? So, let us have a quick recall of relevant information. So, we see that pregnancy causes major circulatory adaptations to support the maternal and fetal needs and the key changes include increase in blood volume, increase in cardiac output, decrease in peripheral vascular resistance, there is physiological hemodilution as well, right? So, how does blood volume change in pregnancy? So, blood volume increases by 40 to 50 percent, plasma volume increases because of which blood volume increases and RBC mass also increases by 20 to 30 percent. And because of this, there is hemodilution because the plasma volume increases more than the RBC mass. That is a very, very important key point to remember. So, what are the cardiac changes in pregnancy and they are reflected because of the blood volume changes. See here, cardiac output, heart rate and stroke volume increase in pregnancy, right? All of these increase in pregnancy and cardiac output is actually, if you remember, heart rate into stroke volume, isn't it? Right. So, naturally, if heart rate is going to increase, stroke volume is going to increase, then cardiac output is also going to increase, right? Now, why is the stroke volume increasing, that is because the blood volume is also increasing in pregnancy, isn't it? So, it is all correlated. So, you remember that cardiac output increases by 40 to 50 percent on an average during pregnancy. It starts to increase by five weeks, peaks at 28 to 32 weeks. That is when the blood volume changes are also peaking and returns to normal by 10 days postpartum. A very, very important point for MCQs to remember is that the ejection fraction remains the same, right? Now, when they ask you when is the cardiac output maximum or the risk of heart failure maximum, see it is given here in your notes, immediately postpartum should be your answer, then intrapartum and then 28 to 32 weeks. Now, why is that? What happens? See, the explanation is given there. Cardiac output increases even further with each uterine contraction because when the uterus contracts, the blood that is there in the uteroplacental circulation, some of it is squeezed back into the systemic circulation, right? That further increases the blood volume a little bit and the stroke volume a little bit and cardiac output increases even further with each episode of uterine contraction. And immediately after placental delivery, the uterus contracts even much stronger and whatever blood was there in the utero-placental circulation, all that extra blood seeps back again into the maternal systemic circulation, thus increasing the cardiac output even further. So, that is your answer. Right? So, now we understand the concept, the logic and its clinical implication. These are the three things, take home messages from this text that we have quickly recalled. 
So now when you answer this question, 25-year-old primary mitral stenosis, pregnant, when is the risk of heart failure going into maximum? It is immediately after delivery. That should be your best choice answer here. Now let's have a look at another question. Okay, A woman presents to you at 36 weeks of gestation with complaints of feeling lightheadedness and dizziness when she lies on her back. She says she feels all right if she lies on her left side or even when walking. What is the most likely reason behind this? Is it increased intracranial pet pressure? That is why she is dizzy. Is it IVC compression? Is it because she takes heavy meals? Or is it because of excessive venous pooling at the feet? What is your best choice answer? So she has lightheadedness and dizziness. So that could also mean was what? Hypotension isn't it? Low blood pressure, particularly when she lies on her back. So what happens when a woman lies on her back and she's 36 weeks pregnant? It is a big uterus, which is also slightly dextro-rotated. These are the important concepts that you need to remember, right? So now you know that this is something physiological and what is your best answer? Yes, IVC compression. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about supine hypotension syndrome. That is an important question and questions have been asked on that. See, at term, near to about term usually, right, cardiac output is lower in the supine position. Why? Because the gravid uterus is slightly dextro-rotated and it compresses the inferior vena cava. So, that causes supine hypotension syndrome, right? Cardiac output decreases. Why? Because the venous return decreases, isn't it? When the IVC is going to get compressed, it is going to cause a decrease in venous return. It is going to cause a decrease in cardiac output because of that and that Decrease in cardiac output is further going to contribute to low blood pressure. That is why supine hypotension syndrome. And that is why we ask pregnant women to lie down in their left lateral position. Left lateral position is the best position to be in pregnancy. There's better cardiac output. So it's good for the mother also. And also because the cardiac output is better in the left lateral position, Obviously, it is the cardiac output which is perfusing the placenta also and the placental circulation also. So, placental perfusion is better for maternal tissue perfusion is also better. So, it's good for both the mother as well as the baby. There's another clinical correlation related to supine hypotension syndrome on which questions have been asked in your exam, right? So, during C-section, we also want to maintain because the woman is going to lie down when we're doing the cesarean section, right? So, we maintain a slightly left lateral uh, tilt. So, usually the OT tables can be tilted but if not then we put a wedge under the right hip, isn't it? So, we give a left lateral tilt to the woman and this question had been asked in your exam. So, now we know that the answer to this question is IVC compression, not increased intracranial pressure, not even heavy meals. And yes, excessive venous pooling at the feet that can happen. Yes, you know, especially in, well, when women who are pregnant and, you know, they are walking for longer duration or sitting with their head, uh, you know, legs down. If the venous, venous pooling occurs, what is that contributing to? That is contributing to the edema, the peripheral edema that we observe in pregnancy, not the supine hypotension syndrome. Right? Now, let's have a look at another question. A 28-week Nali Paris woman comes to the ANC clinic and she's complaining of dizziness and lightheadedness. So, again, you get the keyword here? Low blood pressure for the past one week and she's 28 weeks. There's no complaint of headache, no episode of fainting, palpitations or breathlessness. Right? So, no other symptoms, no other cardiorespiratory symptoms, so to say. That is the take home. The pulse rate is 96, which is fine, right? Uh, the slight tachycardia in pregnancy, we know that, right? Up till 100, we are fine, comfortable. Blood pressure is 100 by 60, which is normal for a pregnancy and cardiorespiratory exam is also normal. So, everything is seeming fine. She's advised all of the following except what will you tell her not to do? Right. So now, if you look at the options, reassurance, maintain hydration, lie down in left lateral position when such episode occurs, urgent ultrasound, sorry, urgent ECG. What is the right answer here? I'm sure you have the answer. But let's quickly recall the important points. How does blood pressure change in pregnancy? 
So yes, women during their pregnancy, especially when you know they are in their late second trimester, they do tend to complain of slight dizziness, you know, especially on prolonged standing, right? Because blood pressure falls in pregnancy overall. Right? And why does blood pressure fall in pregnancy? Because of the peripheral vascular resistance that decreases. Remember, recall, you can make a note here, there is vasodilatation in pregnancy because of the pregnancy hormones like progesterone and estrogen. Right, So, there is decrease in peripheral vascular resistance. That is why the blood pressure falls and the blood pressure falls to its lowest Nadir at 24 to 26 weeks of gestation. So, this is the blood pressure around the time that she got pregnant or pre-pregnancy levels, right? Then it starts to fall, reaches a Nadir at 24 to 26 weeks, then rises again. Why does it rise again? Because the blood volume is also increasing, right? Why does it rise again? Blood volume is also increasing and then it stabilizes somewhere, right? So, it rises back to pre-pregnant, not necessarily pre-pregnancy levels, but slightly lower than the pre-pregnancy levels. So, all in all, blood pressure falls in pregnancy. This is a very, very key important point to remember, right? So, normally, physiologically, blood pressure falls in pregnancy. That is an important Important point, right? So, coming back to the question, this woman who is at 28 weeks, she's around that time when her BP is supposed to be the lowest for her, right? But other than that, there are no other cardiorespiratory symptoms or signs, just some dizziness and lightheadedness. So, you reassure her that it is something physiological and natural that she's experiencing. She needs to maintain her hydration. That is a good advice to give in pregnancy. She needs to lie down in left lateral position when that episode happens. Why? Because the cardiac output will be better. Her blood pressure will be better, right? And obviously, when you have this lightheadedness or dizziness, the moment she lie down, she will feel better, isn't it? An urgent ECG is something that is not needed at the moment, right? So, this is something that you will not advise her. So, she is advised all of the following except an urgent ECG. So, if she had, you know, other signs and symptoms, suppose, uh, of heart disease in pregnancy, right? Then we would have, you know, definitely investigated her for heart disease. And that is where the second question comes in. What are the signs and symptoms of heart disease in pregnancy? What changes are considered physiological and what changes are considered pathological in pregnancy, right? And that is how you build your train of thought and understanding. And that is how you should be reading your rapid revision notes.